Okay. Great. So thanks for joining me today. I want to um, just share some resources that I'm finding to be very useful as well as uh, recommendations for some tools that you can access and use uh, as well to advance your career. Um, also, a couple of podcast okay. recommendations that I have. And then also just answer any questions that you have uh, that you might be facing right now as you're going through the process of either um, making decisions about your career, looking for internships, or conducting a job search. So we'll jump right in mm -hmm. and get started. I'm going to share uh, my screen with you and uh, give you some information about a few things that I think are important tools that you get really comfortable and familiar with using. So the first that I'm going to share, and I just want to confirm that you can see my screen here, yeah. is great. Um, the first tool that I want to recommend as uh, one of the most critical pieces of your toolkit is LinkedIn. And so this is a dynamic environment, a great place where you can learn, research, engage with people, um, find opportunities, as well as uh, get just have access to an enormous amount of resources that are being shared and provided mm -hmm. for people across the globe. So one of the things that I find uh, to be really useful here, as I want to understand what's happening with our alumni, where they're going, what kinds of opportunities they're having, is I'm often and probably on a daily basis looking at the University of the Pacific's school page for the Eberhardt School on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the resources that I want to get you familiar with. Um, before okay. we jump onto that page, I just want to also make sure that you're familiar with all the different resources that are here on LinkedIn. So if I'm interested um, to find out, you know, find different people in my network, there's a couple of quick ways mm -hmm. I can do that. I can use this search bar right up here um, at the top of the screen or I can search specifically just for people in my network by clicking on this My Network button here, just over to the right of the Home button. I can also understand what kinds of jobs and internships are available across any number of specific job markets, um, searching by industry, by geography, by job title, by company name. I can message mm -hmm. people within the platform and have a dialogue that way with individuals that I might be um, connecting and engaging with. I can also see like um, in many other social media platforms, I can get notifications of specific activity that I might be particularly interested in. And the other piece here that I wanna point out and, and make reference to is this learning button over here. The LinkedIn learning platform is a, uh, just an enormous wealth of resources and courses and short videos to learn about all different kinds of skills. As Pacific um, students and employees, we have free access to that LinkedIn mm -hmm. learning platform directly through Inside Pacific. So that's another great skill building resource that's available to us that we can access through this platform. Um, and we mm -hmm. enter it in through the Inside Pacific link. So I just wanna make sure that you are familiar with that. Okay. Okay, great. So the other piece here that I um, mentioned initially is the Eberhardt School page. So I'm gonna take you there and show you a couple of things that are um, very useful. And let's look at this from the member view. So if you were to come to this page, this is the view that you would see. So right on the front page, oh, yeah. you can see, um, highlights of people in different geographic areas, people that have high, we can see people that have graduated in certain periods, but we can mm -hmm. also slice and dice that information by clicking on this alumni link. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. You'll see here that we are also sharing information with our Eberhardt School audience, those people who are following this page. Mm -hmm. about job opportunities, about things that are happening in within our Pacific uh, Eberhardt network. So you'll see each day I'm posting a number of different types of opportunities that might be relevant to our audience. Um, we also recognize mm -hmm. when people in our network, such as uh, the CFO of Five Star Bank, 
are being um, uh, honored and recognized within their industry. So it's just, again, another way that we mm -hmm. can highlight what's happening within the Eberhardt Network. So let me take you quickly to this alumni uh, portion of this page, because I think this is where, um, as a student and uh, graduates, we have the um, easiest way to find people within the alumni network that we might want to engage with. So it will pull up every person whose profile is affiliated with the Eberhardt School based on putting that information directly into their profile. And then we can see um, how many different alumni are in different parts of the world geographically. If we mm -hmm. wanted to, for instance, uh, connect with people in the San Francisco Bay Area who might be working in a particular company, let's just jump on Google since it's right at the top of that list, this will quickly give us a short list of professionals that we can reach out to who might be able okay. to answer questions about working at Google. So it's a really mm -hmm. great resource for us to quickly hone in on people that we might want to network with. Another okay. um, way that you can, as a user of LinkedIn, begin to widen your um, reach to people is by sharing things that you're learning. So I want to just give one quick example, and I just frankly stumbled upon this earlier today, of one of our students mm -hmm. who is very active on the platform and has started to really um, share some of the things that she's learning. So here is Bianca's page and actually post that she made a few days ago about having watched a, uh, a master class hosted by a, a professional on the network and the things that she learned from that. And you'll see here, she got a number of reactions and lots of comments. That's giving her the opportunity to more directly engage with people across the platform. So there's just a couple of examples of ways that this platform can be such a powerful, powerful tool for us. And this is not something, frankly, that um, necessarily you have to expect to understand how to utilize and learn overnight. It's something that you can absolutely mm -hmm. grow into as you uh, spend more time learning and engaging with the LinkedIn network. So don't okay. feel overwhelmed uh, mm -hmm. by a few of the things that I've shown you. Uh, you've, you've got plenty of time to get familiar mm -hmm. with these things. Um, another piece here um, in terms of really useful tools um, is another person that I follow on LinkedIn. So I'm going to jump over to this uh, profile. Uh, this is another career expert, uh, JT O'Donnell, who has her own career consulting business uh, for which she probably charges, you know, really um, uh, high sums of money, but she also gives away a lot of expertise for free. And so this mm -hmm. is uh, one person that I strongly recommend that, that you follow. And here's the other beautiful thing about LinkedIn. You don't have to directly connect with people to follow and get the value of their uh, their resources and their expertise. So right here on any profile, there should be a blue button that says follow. Of course, mm -hmm. it's not blue for me because I've been following her for some time. But you can then see she is a career coach. She is a job search specialist. She's got a lot of different expertise. And here is a really um, relevant resource that she posted uh, as a blog and talks specifically to how recent grads or students going toward graduation can really um, minimize job search time, which is critically important right now, given that there's so much uh, um, uncertainty in the job market and so many more people looking mm -hmm. for opportunities than we would have anticipated at the start of this year. Yeah. And so I'm going to scroll down to show you um, at the end of this post, she has a lot of great uh, content here. But at the end of this post, she also shares links to some very cool resources that she will give away for free. So um, I'm going to also send you as a follow-up links to everything that I'm sharing with you right now. Uh, so you'll be able to access this stuff really quickly. Mm -hmm. But this is just an yet another example of a, a person okay. out there who's pushing tons of really great tools our way and making them easily accessible to us. Mm -hmm. So a couple of um, podcasts that I want to recommend, 
and I'm not sure if you are a regular podcast listener. I find for me personally, um, because I have, when I'm commuting to campus, about a 45 minute commute each way, depending on traffic, that's kind of the perfect amount of time for me to listen to a a reasonably short podcast um, on my Mm -hmm. way to or from work. And so this um, podcast called the Find Your Dream Podcast is hosted by maxlist.org. And uh, it is a really rich uh, resource of topics that cover just about every thing you can possibly think of that you might face as a professional and as a job seeker and goes into uh, very Mm -hmm. tactical and practical and actionable advice for everything that you can possibly think of. So there's there's here's just some of the headlines getting a job during a tough during tough times narrowing career choices, um, the power of relationships. Uh, There's stuff that's very relevant to what we're experiencing with the pandemic right now. So this um, resource has hundreds Mm -hmm. of podcasts. I'm sure that you can find any number that will address some of the questions that you might be facing at any given time in, in your progression as a professional. So that's one that I highly recommend. Another podcast that I have found to be very um, thought-provoking and easy to listen to is this podcast, which is relatively new. It was launched uh, just about a month or a month and a half ago, and uh, the gentleman on the right of the screen in this picture is Eric Johnson, who is uh, an executive director for career development at the Kelly School of Management at Indiana University. And this uh, woman Mm -hmm. here, uh, Dr. Nyla Bari, is a um, higher education um, faculty member, a former dean, and uh, both have had long and successful professional histories, but also have had to navigate challenge and adversity and different kinds of unexpected bumps along the way. And what I really love about this podcast is they talk about very current and relevant issues and they share very honest, candid uh, vignettes about their own experiences. Uh, And it Mm -hmm. makes this um, very real. It doesn't feel to me like someone is just pushing out, here's here's all the ways that you can be successful, but sharing their own lessons learned. Now, I will tell you just a caveat that there's sometimes Mm -hmm. some strong language in this podcast. So I just want to put that warning out there. (laughs) Okay, thank you. You're quite welcome. So um, coming back then to LinkedIn, of course, this is um, a great place to uh, kind of bring the conversation again full circle. Um, Yeah. This is where I think... um, certainly not the only place that you can connect with professionals in the world, but one Mm -hmm. of the most um, rich and robust places where we can find the resources and connections that are going to help us move our way through that career journey. So I'll I'll pause here and um, stop for a moment and let you tell me whether or not you have any specific questions that you brought to the career talk today. Um, so just regarding like the LinkedIn and like the building connections. Sure. Do you just like suggest like, like just like adding random people? I mean, like not random people, but just like people you like come across to like build up like that number of connections. So like make your like, like account or like profile just like, because like a lot of the people like have like 500 plus that are like, they have a large network. I don't know how to really explain this. Yes. Yeah. Do you just like recommend like just building that? Well, so, so I, I recommend building it strategically. So I would okay. start, I would start with people that you already know outside of the LinkedIn environment who are in okay. the professional world. So that could mm-hmm. be faculty members that you've started to build a relationship with. Um, certainly mm-hmm. myself and other staff members at the institution that you're starting to get acquainted and familiar with your classmates of course and and others um, within the pacific uh, network that you have had some interactions with so for example if you Mm -hmm. um, have had a 
industry professional, whether they be an alumni or not directly affiliated with Pacific, come into a class and give a presentation, or you've attended a virtual presentation yeah. with someone that you could then follow up with and, and make, make that um, request to connect more re relevant to having had that interaction, even mm -hmm. if you didn't have a direct person-to-person -person conversation with them. Yeah. Right. So that's a great way to kind of that, that icebreaker, for instance. So if mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know if you happen to uh, listen in to the talk that we had last week with some corporate recruiters, but we hosted a panel session with three corporate recruiters. Now, if students yeah. were listening in on that call um, and were interested in connecting with one of those individuals because they had follow up questions that perhaps they didn't get a chance to ask it would be completely appropriate to mm -hmm. reach out and make within that connection request a brief statement about, um, let's say that you wanted to reach out to Susan Tay, who's at Deloitte, for example. Yeah. You might say in your connection request note, hi, Susan, I heard you last week on the virtual panel and would love to connect to ask a few follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. So right there, she's going to know the context of your um, coming to her profile and what you might want to connect with her about. Mm -hmm. And that would probably for any one of those kinds of similar situations be an instant acceptance yes. for that individual, even if you hadn't okay. again had a direct interaction before that. Yeah. And then again, from that, you can, um, you can then begin to follow other people. If you, if you see here mm -hmm. on my screen right now, there's um, a few different posts that I'm scrolling through. And as I come yeah. across, let's say, um, I wanna see something that someone posted directly uh, that's career relevant. <laughs> because there's a lot of other, um, other topics happening in the world right now. Okay, so I'll stop here. So, um, so this individual is in okay. real estate sales. His name's Dennis Eisen. And he's shared an article mm -hmm. that is related to um, saving um, money on insurance. So if I had something to offer in response to that post, that might be a way to start a dialogue. Okay. So, so there's, so you, you can feel, um, comfortable commenting on other people's posts and that begins to strike a dialogue. Mm -hmm. I'll, sh I'll share with you another, uh, individual who I encourage you to follow. Um, this is a young professional in the tech industry that I personally know, and he is really um, kind of just at the early stages of his marketing career. But he has yeah. recognized that this platform has a, a significant amount of opportunity for him to amplify his brand and his voice. And he's really starting mm -hmm. to embrace making that um, a reality. So Jackson has begun to share some of his own learnings and, and experiences moving through his early career exploration and starting and begin to share those through these uh, blog posts. So the first one is this one here, Humble Ambition, Supercharge Your Career Part One, where he talks about very early on in his life, how he started to um, really identify people that he admired and mm -hmm and was finding ways to engage with them. Um, the, the most recent one here that he just posted a couple days ago um, talks about how as young professionals, and I'll click on it so you can see more of the content, as young professionals, you can really um, engage people if you approach them the right way. So I mm -hmm. strongly um, encourage you to, to take a read of this. Uh, it has some very relevant examples of how he reached out to different people 
And he also shows a couple of contrasts. One um, of a situation where he reached out and he really didn't get the kind of response he hoped for. And then how he tweaked mm -hmm. that approach and got significantly better response. So I think these are um, very, uh, very useful uh, ways to think about how you frame your approach. Um, mm -hmm. I think the other thing too is to, to just keep in mind that there are so many people out there that have um, gone down this path and uncovered some of the better strategies yeah. that you don't have to recreate the wheel, right? You can find examples and say, okay, now how can I tailor mm -hmm. this to my needs and, and then find similar results. Okay. Uh, any, um, anything else popping up um, in your uh, mind about questions at this point? Um, uh, are you just like looking for questions like right now regarding like LinkedIn or just any, any? Or anything on resumes, cover letters, any part of the process. Um, so actually um I, I wasn't like looking for internships like this summer but like maybe like sophomore summer or, like, okay just later sure so like um i guess what would you recommend for like someone who doesn't like have any like relevant like, i guess like job like experience like or like just working in like the field that you're interested in like going into Sure. So uh, you're early in your academic progression. And is that right? Yeah. Great. And so one mm -hmm. of the things that I definitely encourage is that, uh, that you start exploring some of the campus opportunities for both on campus jobs, as mm -hmm. well as leadership in student organizations. Because two okay. of the things that we hear from employers that recruit at Pacific is that they are looking for individuals who have had exposure to the work environment and and that work environment mm -hmm. frankly can be anything it doesn't have to be exactly the work environment that they are presenting to you but they want to, to know yeah. that you have had that um, experience of having to be on time and reliable and consistent and you know mm -hmm. um, performing well the second piece is that they're very interested in identifying individuals who have already shown an interest in engaging with their peers and starting to uh, pursue leadership opportunities. Because mm -hmm. those employers that are recruiting from college campuses, whether it's Pacific or any other college campus across the nation, they're looking yeah. not to hire people that are going to be in an entry level job forever, they're hiring mm -hmm. individuals who have the potential to become future leaders in their organizations. So that entry yeah. level position is just a place to get a foundational understanding of the business and grow from there. Mm -hmm. And so if you demonstrate okay. throughout your college journey that you're developing the right skills, that you're getting mm -hmm. um, exposed to leadership opportunities, that's going to propel you very quickly into internships and later those entry-level opportunities that you are looking for okay thank you you're welcome so if you don't if you don't have any other questions then um i'm i'm delighted that you joined me today and um, mm -hmm. hope that you'll come back next week when i'll share some some other topics yeah thank you for having me absolutely we'll have a great rest of your week you too all right take care bye bye-bye andrew